you ever wondered as an educator why some of our learners simply disengage or do not pay attention? Well, there are other variables to consider. Please remember that as educators, it is our job to capture our students' attention. Always bear in mind, no attention, no cognition. Welcome back to this channel, You're Next, committed to provide you educational videos where learning and teacher expertise meet. If you're new to this channel, please click the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell notification icon so that you won't miss any of our videos. You are still watching your next. This is Professor Noel Yu and I welcome you for another episode today. There is a need for all teachers to be quadlingual in order to communicate, which is about all students, in the way they prefer to acquire information. Two questions at hand. Number one, do you know that there are four languages within the English language? Number two, which of these four languages our students prefer? One rule of the thumb in teaching is knowing our learners. The facility to notice or observe our students is sensory acuity, the basic foundation of establishing rapport. Generally, how do we process information? We process information through our senses. The sense of seeing, the sense of hearing, smelling, the sense of touching or feeling, and of course, tasting. That's why there is a term vacuum, visual, auditory, kinesthetic, olfactory, and gustatory. And now let's add one on the list, and this refers to auditory digital. This is a sense that is responsible for our inner voice, our self, our internal commentary of what we see, what we feel, and what we learn. Now let us dig deeper to each of these languages. Let's find out. So as you can see on the slide, there are four languages within the English language. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and auditory digital. Visual language. These are the students who prefer to take, create, and visualize image in their minds so they can easily remember through picture scene. And of course, these are the students who are picture smart. Popular professions or degrees are designers, artists, architects, and photographers. Auditory language. These are the students who take, who create, who remember you know, information through sounds, through music, and through lyrics. These are the students who have high sensitivity to the world of sounds. Popular, like professions or degrees, are talk show hosts, musicians, lyricists, and of course, call center agents. Kinesthetic language. These are the students who are aware of their bodily responses, which involves touch, internal sensations, and emotions. They prefer information to be given to them through actions, through demonstrations, or total physical response. Popular degrees or professions are athletics, nursing, massage therapy, psychologist, or even, of course, like counseling. Auditory digital language. These are students who are making internal dialogues and assessment whether something makes sense. So professional degrees that are popular are accountants, lawyers, financial analysts, and bankers. Let us consider a metaphor of a pizza since people have different preferences in terms of food. So imagine that there is a pizza with different flavors or spices on it. Some may like the pizza with certain combination that suit their text. As educators, it is relevant to say that it is our job to present topics according to our students' taste, which may not be similar to yours. So educators, 
need to vary the amount of each spice in order to expand our students' learning experience. The facility to be aware of our students' language preference will help us think about situations in a richer, more creative way. How then do we determine our students' preferred language? Here are some specific indicators on how to spot students' preferred language. And as a teacher, how do we interact with them? You may take down notes if you have to. It is suggested that there are three things we have to consider. PWH. P, which stands for pace. W stands for words. And H refers to hobbies. So think, observe your students in terms of their speech rate, their language, their words, and also the activities that they are doing. Let me get into specifics. For visual language, their pace is that students here speak fast and they prefer to think in pictures. So they paint a thousand words and they love art, film showing, drawing, and photography. Auditory language. These are the students who speak at a medium pace. So they speak with melody and rhythm. So they communicate using hearing words. So you can observe their hobbies such as listening to music, reciting poems, or speaking to their friends. Kinesthetic language. These are the students who speak at a low pace. So they take time to process information and they prefer to feel and experience things. Hobbies include sports, like therapy, actions, or any activity that involves movement. And lastly, the auditory digital language. These are the students who take time to process information. They are flexible. Their words, they prefer not to be sensory specific. They tend to analyze some things. So some of their hobbies include decision making, logical and valuable activity. So what must be done? So for visual language, use visual language such as see, look, picture, focus, paint, clear, and include hobbies or activities which involve like saying things such as DIY, arts and crafts, painting, film showing, or even photography. It is suggested that when you present topic or information, you have to use diagrams, flow charts, or even graphic organizers. And then make sure that your presentation is clear, neat, and tidy. One light bulb moment for visual language learners. They remember things when the presentation is clear, neat, and tidy. Auditory language. Use auditory language such as hear, Sound, listen, speak, discuss, all ears, tune in. Include hobbies or activities which involves hearing things such as dialogue reading, reciting a poem, listening to music, or reading a speech. And present topics with a pleasant voice as you incorporate songs and music. Make sure that your presentation is thoroughly explained. One light bulb moment for auditory language learners is that they remember things when the presentation is thoroughly discussed. Kinesthetic language. So use kinesthetic language such as graph, make contact, kick some ideas, jump start, initiate, catch on, get hold of. Include hobbies or activities which involves touching and emotions like sports, therapy, actions, movement, pottery, physiology. Present topics and actions and movement. And please remember, let's get physical is their theme. So make sure that your presentation allows the participants to move around, to manipulate objects and tangible materials. One light bulb moment for kinesthetic language is that they remember things when they are involved in the presentation. It's about experience. The auditory digital language. So use language does not sensory specific. So words such as think, conceive, process, analyze, decide, judge, investigate, affect. Always remember to present topic or information with logic and sense. Make sure that you present ideas in which they can understand. 
confirm and ask questions. One light bulb moment for auditory digital language learners is that they remember things when the presentation makes sense. There you have it, fellow educators. I hope that this vlog reiterates the importance of how we should be flexible when we communicate. Remember that if there is a mismatch in our language preference, learners or our listeners may not totally engage. So do not be surprised that during discussions or presentations or lectures, some of our learners or participants will tune out or even disconnect, especially when their preference is not being addressed. At. It is suggested that if we have mixed group of students, we teachers need to incorporate the four languages in the classroom. What are they again? Welcome to the highlight of the presentation, how to be quadlingual. Simply, first, pay attention to their pacing, to their words and hobbies. Number two, match your words to present students' language preference. Take a look at some examples. For visual learners, the teacher will say, Today, I'd like to show you an attractive diagram which presents the topic let's take a look and focus for auditory learners teachers can say today i would like you to hear a melodious song about the topic let us listen to it and we will discuss it later for kinesthetic learners the teacher can say let me give you a concrete example of a graph to exhibit the topic let us get a grip of this now and let us experience this together for auditory digital the teacher can say it is my job to arrange for you the logical steps on how to estimate the impact of then you put the topic if this makes sense let us proceed now let us of uh, the summary or the recapitulation of ideas discussed a while back. There are four languages within the English language. What are they again? We have visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and auditory digital. Each learner or participant has its own preferred language. And it is important to use this preferred language to our target audience or to our target students. So consider the different indicators determined through speech rate or pacing through the words uttered by our students and choose activities or hobbies that our learners prefer inside the classroom. Learning the preferred language will help create a stronger bond, stronger rapport between teachers and students. It is advised to incorporate the four different languages inside the classroom. I hope you learned something in this episode. See you again next time. This is again Professor Noel Yu, signing off.